church. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As again, as we said, we celebrate his 15th pastoral anniversary today. I took the liberty to, to research what the number 15 means. And the number 15 has an important meaning in the Bible. It reflects victory. Uh, it reflects victory and reunification. And it can and it can be seen as a sign of holistic completeness. Reunification. Reunification means restoration. It means unity to a place or a group of people. So what is Holy Spirit saying? I'm about to unify the house of Judah. And I'm about to unify the people that are under this prophetic word on today in the Old Testament, it can also represent, the number 15 also represents God's might. Oh God. God's might, his power, and his resolve. Oh, and his resolve to a set people. Oh God. If you are set people, then that means God came today to resolve some things. He came to settle some things. Okay, so number 15, I need you to understand where we're going because it's a a God never called a prophet to do a minor assignment. Whenever he sent me out, I got a word. Whenever he sent me out, I came to ship. Whenever he sent me out, I came to say, well, let's say the Lord. So I know it's pastoral uh, anniversary, but the word of God is for people. So today we're going to come from Deuteronomy. First chapter, Deuteronomy 1. This is the second um, law book by Moses. Deuteronomy 1, we're going to start at the first through the eighth verse. These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the wilderness east of the Jordan. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh by Mount Seir Road. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, of the 11th month, Moses proclaimed to, to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. This was after he had defeated the king of the Amorites east of the Jordan Territory. Moses began to expound this law saying, verse 6, The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed here long enough. And this Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Najib, and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Uh, mm -hmm. Go in. Come on. Yeah, come on. Go in and take possession of the land. Yeah, yeah. The Lord swore he would give to you, to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to this descendant after him. I'm going to read verse 8 again. See, I have given you yes. this land. Yes. Go in and take possession yes. of the land. Yes. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Yes. My topic for today is it's time to possess. Yes. It's time to possess. Yes. It's time to possess the place you've been in. Been there long enough. Where you are, you're stagnated. You've been there. You've done it. You done tried it. You done tried it three different ways. You've been there long enough. God says today, it's time to it's time to get up and go possess the land. These are the words that Moses gave on this side of the Jordan. At this point, Israel was camped on the plains of Moab, and they could see. They could look across and they could see the Jordan. They could look across and they could see the promise. Yes, sir. Now, I'm talking to you today. You can see what God promised you, but you just can't get there yet. But I can see it, I can sense it, I feel it. The people came up, they said we're about to go global, they said we're about to be international. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. So I just can't get there. So Moses came to proclaim to the people, now is the time. This was the land of Canaan that God promised them, but which they had not occupied for 400 years. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, that's a long time to be watching my promise. Mm -hmm. In the wilderness, they had come through a long and difficult journey from Egypt, made all the more long 
and difficult because of their unbelief. Mm -hmm. What is God saying to some people in the camp? We got to check where your belief system is. Oh. Do you believe that we can possess the land? Oh. Or are you going to murmur and complain? It could be mm -hmm. that you're the one that's holding us up. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The Bible says the journey was made long and difficult because of the unbelief and the death of the adult generation, mm -hmm. which had came out of Egypt first. Mm -hmm. Two things. Disbelief. They had no faith. Mm -hmm. It was some that were among them that did not believe because we've been here too long. It's been all this time. We keep hearing about it, but we ain't got there yet. You keep preaching about it. You keep talking about it, but I don't believe it's going to happen because we're still waiting. We ain't got this unbelief. Come on. Come on. Oh my God. No faith had them stacked me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But there was also another issue. No, no. The original ones mm -hmm. had died. Yeah. Uh, so death had hit the camp. Mm -hmm. Watch this. But whenever you believe in God for something, mm -hmm. whenever you believe in God for something, whenever you can look over and see the promise, but you can't quite possess it, I can look over and I can see it, but before I can possess it, something in me has to die. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 That Moses spoke to Israel. This is a pivotal point. This is a turning point. This yeah. is a shift in Israel's history. They are on the threshold of the promised land. Right. And they are ready to adopt, watch these words, they are ready to adopt their true identity. Mm. Uh, name change, name change. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're ready to adopt their true identity. Wow. So Moses says, I got to give them the second book. So he begins to tell them. He says, this is the second book of Deuteronomy. They could see the promise, but they had not been able to grasp it. Mm -hmm. This is a turning point. This is the time for shift. Mm -hmm. Time for them to walk in who God destined them to be. Mm -hmm. From your birth, we already knew you were going to be. Huh? From your birth, we already knew who you were going to be. Right. From your birth, in your mother's womb, he called you to be a prophet to the friend. Yeah, yeah. Before the sperm ever met the egg, yeah. he knew what you was going to be. Yeah. He knew you were going to be Pastor Sturman. He knew that eventually they would elevate you to bishop. He knew he did, eventually you would have to migrate into the new. Yeah. He already knew. He knew who, who he was going to assign to you to be your parents. Mm -hmm. He knew he was going to assign to you to be the prophet of your house. Yeah. He knew who he was going to assign to help you to say, let's not, let's not do it this way. Let's do it that way. He knew he was going to assign to sow the So, the command to move, That's good. he said, he said, the journey from Mount Horeb to where we're going is an 11-day journey. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The journey from Mount Horeb to Kadesh only took 11 days. But, what? it took them 40 years. Yes. Come on, come on. Yeah. work it, work 40 it. 40 years for this generation it. of work unbelief. Work it. Come on, work it. So where is God saying, you got to watch you come on. and Check your cap, check your oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to make sure mm. you don't have nobody in your camp that's holding you. That's right. Why? Because yeah. of God destined us to go to the nation, and your thinking is for the city. Oh, you know we have to See, I understand now because I've stepped over into pastoring, so I understand now that sometimes as a pastor, we can look at our members, our followers, and we see more in them than they see they see in yeah, themselves. Yeah. So it frustrates us. So we have to get their thinking up. That's right. Watch that. Right. Right. But it becomes a problem. Well. When God has shown me the nation. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you keep talking to me in my ear about the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! 
this mountain. You've been there at this mountain. This is what right. Long enough. Long enough. Because there's a mountain in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Then it could be possible that I can't see past mm. the mountain. And, and, the mountain. and God told Moses, yeah. go tell them they've been staring at that mountain all look and they Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Go over into, can they look this way? Uh -oh. <laughs>
and to dominate their actions. Mm. They wouldn't have been there for 40 years <laughs> if they would have spoke out of their mouth oh. and believed in their heart <laughs> and moved accordingly. Yeah. They could possess the land a long time ago. Yeah. All right. Amen. Number two, you have to obey in all things. <laughs> You must obey in all things, not in just some. Amen. That's just now. If Moses were here, he could tell you a thing or two about this. Okay, because Moses got in trouble. The leader. That's right. That's right. The leader. The, leader. the one who gave them the job. Yeah. Yeah. The one who went up and spoke to God. Yeah. And came out the mountain and looked differently. The glory of God was so on Moses, they couldn't even look at him. But Moses messed up. That's right. Tell the truth. Watch this. God tells Moses. I want you to speak to the rock. Speak to him. Uh -huh. yes. And water won't come forth. Yeah. Well, come on, come on. Say it. All oh, Moses had to do. Now you, you, you know the voice of God. God <laughs> speak to you. Yeah, yeah. You know him. He has shown himself to you. You don't want to not spend time came down to the table. Now you done all this. He says, Moses, speak to the rock. And water won't come out of the rock. Moses. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't speak to the rock. He got a stick and hit the rock. Uh -huh. He hit it twice. And it, the Bible says he hit the rock out of anger. And when he did that, God said, okay, now I'm going to deal with you. So now what we going to do? I'm going to let you lead them there, but you ain't going to do it. That's harsh. But when God give a word, when God give a word, you got to obey all of it. Not just the word that you like. That God has promised us we have not possessed it because we have a way doing stuff. Right now, it's a travesty to lead people to Christ All right. and then find out or to lead them to what God destined them to be and then find out I can't even go on with y'all. Mm. I'm going to watch y'all possess the thing that I've been praying about. Believe in God for it. Encourage y'all for it. I'm going to watch y'all go possess it. Jesus. That had to be a harsh thing, but God yeah. said, don't play with me. I told my team, I said, when 2023 hit, God told me, he said, we ain't leaving nothing on the table. He said, if you come with me, you better come all the way. And I begin to tell them, I begin to get on and get on live. But y'all see me on live all the time. I begin to get on live, and I was telling people, God said, no more lukewarm. He had his plan. He said, you either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. He said, time out for planning. I'm not planning on that. If you come in, come all the way. I will do it if you go in, come all the way.
wondering, a grasshopper syndrome is a definite way That's to right. keep you Thank wandering you. around yeah. your promised land yeah. instead of taking position. Right. Right. Come on. The Israelites had a grasshopper, grasshopper syndrome. Watch this. Yeah. Because they said, they said, God didn't say it, they yeah. said, yeah. the people are stronger than us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They yeah. huge. Yeah. We look like grasshoppers <laughs> compared to them. Everybody else got a big church. Do we have the Holy Ghost? Everybody else got 300 members. What are they saying? Everybody else got mega ministry. Are they doing a mega As long as we make excuses, speaking of bad reports, you will never possess your promise. Amen. Could it be? You don't have it because of what's coming out of your mouth. Could it be that we have not went global yet because we got some people on the team that has a grasshopper mentality?
The Israelites had to make the first move. Mm. Moses had taken them as far as he could, right? So Joshua, <clears throat> come on, see. Mm -hmm. This is Joshua 3 and 8. Before the waters parted for them, before they could walk over, they had to make a move. What step of faith did they need to open the waters of the joy? They had to stop procrastinating mm -hmm. and step out of their comfort zone. That's right. right. When you go global, oh. you ain't in your comfort zone. That's right. That's right. Right. When you go global, I'm telling you, I'm talking from experience now. When they call you from Pakistan, and the first thing I said, wait a minute, ain't they killing them? <laughs> God say international man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you get back to get out of what you're familiar with right. okay. and step over into okay. the unknown, it's yeah. all blind. Yeah. God is saying, can you trust me when you can't trust me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you dip your toe in that water? Because mm. oh. once you dip your toe, it's on for me. Yeah. So he says, he says, stop procrastinating <clears throat> and you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to dip your toe in the water and keep moving forward. Mm. Dip your toe in the water and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. I mean, you can't stop after you have to take this dip. You can't stop. You got to keep going. Can't back up. Can't, can't, can't turn around. You got to keep moving forward. Number six, could it be that you have not possessed the land because you have not taken these three steps? You gotta believe, wait, and repeat. Mm. Believe, wait, repeat it again. Believe, wait, repeat it again. Believe, wait, repeat it again. What is God saying? When you're going up to possess your promise, man, you gotta believe you're going to see. It. You gotta begin to see yourself glow. I gotta see myself possessing everything God told me. Yeah. I gotta yeah. see myself preaching before the nations. I gotta see myself winning souls. I gotta see the seats full. I gotta see, oh, we need a bigger building. I gotta see, oh, don't purchase that better than you believe it. You gotta see it the way God sees it. Yes. Then you gotta wait. Amen. Oh, God. Yeah. He yeah. give you a glimpse and he said, now wait, hold up. <laughs> I gotta see. Why, why, okay, wow. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why do he tell us we have to wait? Because I'm going to give you a glimpse of gold. Yeah. But then I'm going to see how your attitude is going to be before yeah. I give it to you. Right. Wow. I want to see how your posture is going to be before wow. I bless you. Uh -huh. I'm just going to give you a glimpse to see how you're going to handle it. I'm going to give you a glimpse to make sure that you still going to love kids. Yeah. Oh. Right. I'm going to give you a glimpse to make sure you still going to minister to the people. I'm going to give you a glimpse to make sure yeah. Yeah. that you're ready to possess. Uh -huh. yeah. Believe. Wait. Wait. Number seven. Number seven. <clears throat> then you have to prepare a fight. Come on. Come on now. Number seven. Last one before you possess. Mm -hmm. Before I possess, I may have to fight. Mm -hmm. This is why warfare is so important. Mm -hmm. As they move forward to possess the land, God's repeated instructions. Watch this. His repeated instructions to them, to Joshua was, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Listen, listen. He says, it says, if you had that, if you had this idea that you could just stroll, stroll over to the promised land on a flower bed of ease, there ain't gonna be no troubles. My whole team gonna be with me. The finances gonna be there. People just gonna be sowing. Seats gonna be. Oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. I can tell you some stories right there. Before you possess this promised land, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight past your emotions. You're going to have to fight past I'm mad. You're going to have to fight past I'm frustrated. You're going to have to fight past what I see. You're going to have to fight past the you see. You're going to have to fight past what I feel in my flesh. You're going to have to fight past I want to cut them out. You're going to have to fight past all. The promises are for you. They belong to you. Yeah. And yet, they still are. Come on, come on. Even though God said it, you dreamed it, it showed you the vision, you saw it both across the ceiling, you saw a hand right on the wall, it still ain't all right. <laughs> the promised land already belonged to the Israelites. Already, God right. already said it. That's right. He had already spoken. Uh -huh. It said 400 years. Mm. He said, oh, Jesus. watch this. He said, I've given it to you. But he also told them to go on. Oh God. He said to 
take something from you, we got to have a backup. Yeah, right. We ain't going to be saying, you know. That's right. And it's yours. Mm -hmm. Right? Listen, listen. It says, in order to take it, means it's going to involve a battle. Uh -huh. Watch this. But, here we go. It's going to involve a battle. But God had already guaranteed their victory. That's right. Woo! God. Yeah. He had already guaranteed the promised land is yours. Mm -hmm. I already showed it to you. I've already given you a glimpse. I already told them. I raised up Joshua. Y'all been doing that for over 400 years and this is yours. He said, but you got to understand that you got the right for it. Mm -hmm. He said, but the end result is you win. Listen, listen. In order for you to 
that is not only is God is on my side. Yeah. 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 Well. Ain't no devil in here. Get my shell. Oh, every Sunday. Uh-huh. I come back. 
don't even think at the time we even talk that much. You just walked up and said, how long are you going to be running? I'm hanging. I'm like, what? It was until he spoke those words that God said that. What is in your mouth is a life-changing altar. So never downplay. Watch it. Never downplay what God gives you to give the people. Watch it. You can't look at their face and say, well, because they make more than me. Or they see CEO. Or they own the company. If God says, that's right. Well, speaking. Because I know without a shadow of doubt, if that day in that parking lot across the street at Second Calvary Baptist Church, you had not spoke that word, I would have never preached. Because I had so many, I had some good kids. I ain't got too many kids. How you gonna preach? How you gonna preach with all these kids? I said, I'm not all these kids. But in your mouth is a word that would change people's life. It'll change their thinking. So you can't downplay it. I need you to see yourself like God sees you. Yeah. 
Listen, how for you. He said, if I showed you the whole picture, he said, I have to give it to you in bits and pieces, what you can handle. He said, that's all we're about to blow your mind. He said, so imagine if I show you the picture. <laughs>